Welcome back to this week's Cape Breton Fly Fishing. My name is Justin Lovell and this week I'm going to tie my three favorite flies for the Bador Lakes. You're not going to want to go anywhere, stay tuned. So the first fly I'm going to be tying is a green shrimp on an A-Rex shrimp hook size 6. Now if you notice this hook it kind of got a taper as a shrimp body would. But I'm going to put some .30 lead on there. Give it about 8 or 9 turns and I'm just going to helicopter the wire off. If you have an old pair of scissors you can use them as well. Never use your good tying scissors. So the thread I'm going to be using is just a Uni 6 aught and olive. Let's get started here. I'm just going to slide that weight up a little bit on the shank of the hook. What I'm doing is just wrapping the thread in the wire so that it doesn't move. Let's come back and just make a little bump of thread behind the lid here. Now for the tail I'm going to use some orange bucktail. Now the length is up to yourself. A lot of people like to have the tail really long. I prefer short because when the fish goes to bite you don't want it nipping at that long piece of bucktail. You really want it to lock into the hook. And when we're using bucktail I want to select the top part of the hair. It stops it from flaring out. So I'll just take a couple pieces here. And I'll just take my comb, brush out any under fur or any waste that could be in it. So that length looks good to me. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to tie. And I'll actually tie some of this waste on the shank of the hook. Let's come out my scissors here and I'll trim that away. So next I'm going to get some ice dub and olive. Or caddis green, sorry. Just a little bit here. I'm just going to dub this on my thread. Take my brush now and I'm just gonna fluff it out. Now for the eyes, if you don't have these eyes, easy shrimp eyes, you can use fishing line, just melt them down with um, a lighter. And when you go to tie these eyes on, there's going to be little grooves right here. That's what you want facing up on the hook shank. So that's going to be your grip. Just tie them down. And as you can see, you can probably already notice the taper of the fly starting. For a rib, I'm just going to use some black tying thread. You can actually get away with using wire as well. So we have that in, everything's looking good. I'm going to use synthetic dubbing, olive orange or olive. Started here on my dubbing, my thread. I don't want it on there too tight. Just 
Notice how it's starting to taper. To me, that's the most important thing when you're tying a shrimp fly is the eyes and the taper of the body. Alright, now what I'm going to do is take my dubbing brush, and if you don't have one of these, you can use a popsicle with Velcro, popsicle stick, and you're just going to come in and you're just going to rough this up. Don't worry if you can see the lead or the eyes, because we're going to cover that up in a minute. For the shell back, I'm going to use Pro Sport Fisher. My friend actually came up with this idea. And you can actually buy them without the eyes. But I don't have any on me right now. So what I'm going to do is just come in and trim them away. Leaving that little point right there. So I'll come in. I'll size it up first. Looks good. Get my tying thread, I'll lash that down. Now I'm going to take my rib, I'm just going to start running it through. Just be careful you don't hook any of the too much of the dubbing, because they're going to act as legs. Taking your time. Tidy up and tighten down on everything. Push this waist back. Trim it away. Now we can start our head. Building up our head here. And we'll come in with our whip finisher. One, two, three, four, five. And that's it. You know, I like to fish this fly at the first of the season. So anywhere from April right up to the middle of May. And I'm not gonna say, I don't, I'm not saying that don't use it in the summertime because if a trout's hungry, they are gonna strike it because they're hungry, right? They want their food. But I had the most success April, between April and May with this green guy. So the next fly I'm going to be tying is a fly that I like to use in the fall time. It's just a pink shrimp. So I'm going to use an A-Rex size 6 shrimp hook. Only this time I'm not going to put any lead on the shank of the hook. The thread I'm using is a fluorescent pink UTC. But you can use Uni or Danville, whatever you have. So I'm just going to come down to about the hook point. And I'm going to put some pink bucktail on this guy. And again, I want to select my hair from the top of the hide. As you can see, I got some gaps in it. This is a pretty old hide. And uh, when I first started, I was chopping everywhere. I didn't really know where to take the, the fur from. So again, we're just going to use a small amount. But it's up to yourself if you want to really bulk the tail up, you can. I'm just going to brush out the under fur here. Now I'm satisfied with that length there, so I'm going to tie it in. I'm actually going to tie all this waist in on the shank of the hook as well. Just to help with the bulk of the body. Come in with my scissors, trim it away. Now 
Now I'm going to put some antennas on this guy. And what I'm going to use is some ostrich turl. It's pink, but the tips are dyed black. I'm just going to select about four. One more here. come underneath the shank of the hook with them like so tie them in tight and we'll bring our thread back these ostrich turtles on this fly for some reason just gives it so much movement that the, the trout get really excited when they see it you should really see this thing swim, and I'll show it to you this summer. Again, for the eyes, we're just going to use some Easy Shrimp eyes. I'm going to tie that on top of the shank of the hook. You can glue these too if you'd like. It's up to yourself. I don't bother with that though. Now for the legs, I'm just going to use some pink saddle hackle. I'm just going to trim that fuzzy stuff away. You don't need that for anything. I'm going to trim one side. Just helps with the wraps when you do that trimming. The barbs off of one side of the stem. Now I'll get my rib material, which is just a pink tying thread. Again, you can use wire if you like. It doesn't have to be pink, it can be whatever color. And for the body, I'm just going to use some pink seals fur. And just like the green fly that we tied, I'm not worried about tightening the dubbing too much. One of the things I like about these shrimp eyes is actually if you don't have a, a hook that is a shrimp hook, the eyes will actually help make the taper as well. So when this fly, because this fly is not a weighted fly, when you go to cast it, just count you know five seconds in your in your head and then start stripping in fast. You want to strip this fly in fast. Get my hackle pliers here now because in a minute I'm going to wrap my legs in. I'm just going to fluff the body up too as well. Don't worry if you catch any of the dubbing that we just roughed up because we're going to go back again with our brush and scrub it out. But before we do that, we have to give this guy a haircut in order for the shell back to lay down on it on top of the shank. So we're just going to come in with our scissors, trim the top of them barbs away. Perfect. Again, I'm using a pro shrimp shell with the eyes, but I'm going to cut the eyes away.
between the outer tying thread. Don't worry about tying this this fly neat. It's it doesn't have to be. Now we're just going to wiggle our thread through the hackle step hackle barbs that we tied on. Catching our rib material here, making sure that it doesn't come undone when we trim it away. Now if you notice too, I never really prop the eyes up on this one. I kind of want them laying down. But there's lots of variations of this fly. Different colors. Don't be nervous to experiment. I tied these in blue and caught fish on them. Yeah, so typically in the fall time is when I had a lot of luck with this this fly here in the Bador Lakes. All right, so this is your A-Rex fly tying tip of the week. So I'm gonna show you what this hook and hackle gadget is for. Sometimes, well, mostly it should anyway. When you buy a pack of hooks, it should say the hook size right there. So we, right off the start, we already know this is a size 10. But if you ever have a spill with your hooks and you're not sure, you can always come over to your trusty guide here and you're going to take the hook and you're going to lay it. I know this is a size 10 so I'm just going to put it right on top of the number 10 here. So now I know that it matches with the picture on the gauge so I know it's a size 10. Many different reasons why it's important to know a hook size. For starters we would need to know the hook size so we can match our hackle with the hook. And that's your A-Rex fly tying tip of the week. My last fly I'm going to be tying is my favorite fly. To me, in my opinion, this is the best fly for the Bador Lakes. It's called the Orange Shrimp. So we're going to get started. The hook I'm using is a shrimp hook, size 8 from Arex. The thread I'm using is a UTC 140 Fire Orange. So let's talk a little bit about the Bador Lakes. So the Bador Lakes is centered in the middle of Cape Breton Island. And it's an irregular estuary. It has fresh water running into it, and it also outflows to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. So we'll put a tail on this guy. I'm just going to strip some barbs off an old saddle here. One of the unique things about the Bedore Lakes, it's, it's, it's the home of many fish. Like you could be fishing for brook trout, and then the next thing you know a rainbow trout comes on to your fly. And the same with striped bass. We have striped bass, rainbow trout, brook trout. We have cod, we have mackerel, flounder, all in this gigantic lake. So we're gonna keep the tail short on this guy. There was a few times I was fishing this year and we were fishing for a rainbow and the next thing you know, it was a, a whole day of mackerel fishing. <laughs> Now for the shell back, I'm going to use a material called Edge Bright. You can use surveyor's tape if you like. I'm just going to cut a small little piece of this off. Come in here and I'll tie that on top of the shank of the hook. Now for the eyes, I'm going to use some black bead chain. Now it's important that it is bead chain. Make sure it's black when you get it. I find I've used you know gold and silver, for, but for some reason they like the black eye on this fly. So I'm going to come out with my wire cutters. Trim them away. So I have two here. One on each end. I'm going to come out with my thread and I'm going to tighten this up. Now if you want it to use super glue when you're done putting the wraps on, you can just give it some drying time and they're not going to go anywhere. So now I'm just going to wrap around the eyes. If 
For the head I'm just going to use some material called orange chenille. And what I'm going to do is strip some of this fluff away and there will be two pieces of string there. That's what you want to tie it in with to get the grip on it first. So like that. Now I'll just come between the eyes again and back and front and I'll wrap my head on. Come in with my scissors, trim away. So for the body, I'm going to use a material called orange yarn. Put that over there out of the way. And for the rib, again I'm just going to use some fire orange tying thread. This fly, you can fish this fly year round. I've used this fly ice fishing, I've caught smelt with it, rainbow trout with it. Dead of the summer, fall, it's a really well rounded fly. So it is a must have in your fly box. Okay, what I did there was to strip some barbs off the stem. I'm going to tie them in. Now we're going to wrap our body in and we're going to make a taper in the process doing this. So we're going to start off big at the head and we're going to slim out towards the eye of the hook. I'm going to start wrapping back again. We'll give it a few extra wraps by the head. Start moving our thread for our yarn forward again. Tie that off when you're happy with it. Tidy up around the eye. Now we're going to bring our legs in. You know, for some reason this orange fly, the fish go crazy for it. And I don't really know why because they say fish are colorblind, so. But that's what they want. They want the orange and we're not going to uh, argue that when we're fishing. Like I said, I've had great success on the green fly, the pink fly, but this fly right here, I don't know what it is. So I give it a haircut on top here. I'm going to bring my shell back forward. Come in with our rib now. Just be careful you don't break your thread when you're tying in the rib. I always say when you're fishing the Bedora Lakes, when in doubt, always throw an orange shrimp on. Pull this material back here.
piece here around the eye. That's all right. And that's it. That's your orange shrimp. Like I said, you can fish this fly any time of the year. And for some reason, the trout really, not just the trout, the striped bass, anything really will come after this fly. All right, so that's the orange shrimp fly. Check back in the summertime as I'll show you where, when, and how to fish these flies. Until next time, see you later.